I remember when I was younger and I used to go out uh, drinking when I was like a teenager. Um, I remember being in pubs and my friend Greg is so funny. <laughs> He, he always used to get into fights with people and when he got he was a kind of relaxed kind of guy but once he had a few beers he started getting a bit um, violent upset comes about or hurt comes out or anything comes out then i realize that i have a lot more work to do to go toward my angelic stage if we have that consciousness and we aim not to get upset because we're in a higher state, then then chances of us getting upset drop down quite a lot because there's actually a, a practice and a decision about it. Where the sun hits properly, where enough water is coming, where enough fertilizer is coming, that was exactly in the right mm. spot for my growth. <laughs> Om Shanti. Many blessings. Today we're talking about how to not get upset by other people because other people can definitely upset us potentially. <laughs> you know, relationships is often the area of our life where we get the most disturbed, isn't it? The most emotionally bent out of shape and rattled. And so whether we like it or not, we're going to have people in our life and they're probably going to trigger us to some degree, at least at some point. So how are we going to manage not being triggered? How can we maintain our happiness? How can we stay in a cheerful, positive space and learn from the relationships rather than letting them beat us up and get us all over the place? So that's what we're going to discuss in this wonderful session today. Thank you for your presence. Hello, Shireen. Hello, Michael. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. And um, you're around more people than I am, aren't you? You're running a center, lots of people all the time. People building things and people coming to the center and people this and that and all these things, isn't it? How do you manage all these people and not get upset? Yeah. My first secret. I think there is a squeezer and a squeezee. Mm -hmm. Right. The squeezer is the people in my life and I'm the squeezy. And I just remember if you squeeze orange juice, orange juice comes out. If you squeeze mango, I'm sorry, if you squeeze an orange, orange juice comes out. If you squeeze a mango, mango juice comes out. If you squeeze Shireen, only love should come out. Not upset, not disappointment, not that, not this only love should come out and if i'm being squeezed which i'm being squeezed all the time and upset comes about or hurt comes out or anger comes out or whatever comes out right being insulted comes out anything comes out then i realize that i have a lot more work to do to go toward my angelic stage Mm. So every squeezer is a messenger. They're coming to give me a message that this is what is inside me. It has nothing to do with them. That's extremely empowering. Yeah. I take take the onus out of them. I put the responsibility on myself and I say, you know what? I liberate you. <laughs> I liberate you from uh. any kind of expectation from me. You are just here to squeeze, and you can go ahead and squeeze if you want. I would rather you didn't squeeze, but it's fine you can squeeze because that's giving me a message. That's beautiful. So we're all being squeezed, and whatever comes out is obviously <clears throat> what we're made of at this moment. And it can change, and it can change. Right. And also we need to understand is that, let's say someone is squeezing me and I'm upset, right? Upset is coming out. Mm then it's my problem. The squeezer is just a squeezer. Whatever is inside is coming out. So I should never make it someone else's problem, right? If I'm upset with someone, I'm making it someone else's problem. It's actually my problem. That's right. Now, I, I completely agree with you. And let's just have like a, like a disclaimer here about this, this topic, because when I was on my way to the airport in Phoenix, I noticed a billboard that said something along the lines of, are you being controlled by someone um, with like these human trafficking and all this sort of thing. So there are situations 
where people Absolutely. are being manipulated. And in that case, you don't want to take our advice in this session. You want to get the hell out of there and go to the police or something. I'm not saying people watching this are like that, but if there are situations where instead of taking responsibility for ourselves, we actually need to go to the police or get some help or get the hell out of there if someone's like, but that norm, most people are not being trafficked. And so thank goodness. And so, um, that applies to nearly every other situation. Yeah. Yeah. This is for you have freedom to go get a job. You have freedom to walk out if you want. This is for those kinds of people. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, and just you're wanted, above, above age. Right. And all of that. So um, I imagine that's okay. But I, I sometimes think it does this apply in all contexts. And the answer is not really. But or even then, it's you could still benefit from this situation in terms of taking responsibility and, and real life and getting out of there. So, so th what you're saying is very, very deep that when when someone squeezes us, wherever we're like is what comes out. And so we, we're taking the responsibility back to ourselves rather than pointing our finger and saying everyone else is to blame because oftentimes we can get um very upset about random stuff you know like my name wasn't mentioned on the list or something was in the wrong order or why didn't where someone looked at me funny or um i remember when i was younger and i used to go out uh drinking when i was like a teenager um, I remember being in pubs and my friend Greg is so funny. He he always used to get into fights with people. And when he got, he was a kind of relaxed kind of guy. But once he'd had a few beers, he started getting a bit um, violent. So people would, he would look at someone oh, and they'd okay. look at him. No, and like my first question is, how is it okay in England for people, teenagers to drink? Isn't there a legal that, age limit? No, 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 it's 18. But people would, I, I stopped drinking when I was 18. <laughs> um he would meet people and so I remember this expression, why are you looking at, are you looking at me? Why are you looking at me like that? Right. So people can think you're looking at them funny and then they get in a fight and then so anything can can set someone off potentially, right? To to lose it. So that we have to take the control back and say, I'm responding to things and that's my responsibility. I don't have to go off the rails as soon as someone looks at me funny or or says something. So um, one thing that helps helps us to not get upset by other people is to realize that the only reason people act in strange ways is because they're under an external influence. Only reason. There's one and one reason alone. They're under an external influence. That might mean an influence of somebody else, right? There's people control other people and they do strange things. But the deeper thing is that we're under the influence of these five evil spirits, five ghosts, five vices, five energies, lust, anger, ego, greed, and attachment. These five energy frequencies have entered the soul, entered the body, the person, and they are acting out through us and they are the things that are causing all of the weird stuff in the world this is extremely deep thing to realize so like so lust is a classic example how much strange things happen because of lust right it's just off the charts the amount of stuff happens and then how much stuff happens because of anger the vice of anger the negative feeling and then what about greed how many people have got you know done straight stupid things for greed and then ego, of course, wars have been started over ego. And then attachment. Attachment is sort of more lighter than the other ones in many ways. But that causes all kinds of chaos as well. So it's not that they're bad. It's that the these negative energies are in there getting them to do things. Right. You know what I've noticed with any of the vices, right? is they create a false narrative in your head. Mm -hmm. um, let's say I have laziness, right? And uh, it creates a false narrative in my head. Oh, it's okay, I don't have to do this and I don't have to do it now. Even if it is good for me, then I won't do it because it's creating a false narrative. And these false narratives make us do a lot of things that we are not supposed to be doing, right? 
that's what you're calling an external influence like if you understand mm-hmm. that there is the vice and then there's a conversation in their head because of the vice and because of the conversation in their head they're behaving a certain way and to separate out all of that from who they are as a pure soul and just see them as a pure soul yeah that that makes a huge difference to to have that attitude that this is a good soul originally and eternally a good soul their negative influences come on them and that's why they're acting the way they are but underneath that they're good that that doesn't justify bad behavior by the way like if someone's doing something terrible to you you have to you know get out of the situation or call them out about it um but it does lighten our feeling towards them just like um if someone is drunk they can say stuff or do things that they wouldn't do normally right because they're under an external influence or if someone is sick they often act differently or if someone um their brain isn't working properly because they're getting senile or or there there's some some injury to their head or something these are all external influences right and even um situations like if someone's under loads of pressure um and normally they don't have to do thousands of things and they have more time and they haven't got any time so they can't talk to you for as long because they're like in the middle of 50 things they can't have a long conversation that's an external influence as well so th- this is just useful to lighten our feeling towards towards people and with then less that helps us not get as upset about it because it's not you can kind of say it's not really their fault they're under an influence so we you feel different about it i was thinking michael related to this right i always feel is not to have to not to put too much pressure on human beings right because they are going through their own stuff why am i putting yeah. my pressure on them right mm-hmm. everyone everyone who comes in i mean of course let's say i'm paying someone to do some work hopefully they're going to do the work and i can't say oh i can't put pressure <laughs> they shouldn't do the work but you know like we're getting a lot of work done i can't say that but when it's not that situation when it's not in a work situation where it's not in that kind of a transactional situation but let's say in relationships or um anywhere right you you go and you think it's not where it's not a work situation um you think but why am i putting so much pressure on this person even for them yeah. to be nice to me right i feel i'm putting too much pressure they can be whatever they want to be i don't have to take it if they're not nice i can walk away but to have that expectation out of them and then me feel upset if they don't do it it's just too much work oh yeah absolutely so it's not having unreasonable expectations because the the higher our expectations of people the more likely it is they can't live up to them and the more likely it is we get upset yeah you know, and poor and, people too right everyone is going through so much these days poor people yeah yeah i mean i can give an example i've i run a business and we we um connect with lots of people and like conversations with people and like what and um sometimes like we send emails uh, and someone says they're going to do something and then they don't do it and we don't hear from them and i think well, what 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 and then they email back and says oh my someone died or i got really sick or something 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 and it, it wasn't that they weren't doing they they just couldn't do it because they were like really sick for a month or they had to travel somewhere unexpectedly and so there's all these things that people are going through Uh, whether it's money problems health problems um mental problems emotional problems relationship issues so you, so we're living in this crazy world with all this stuff and plus we got these five negative energies in t- in us as well and then everything else happening and so it's like how how can we hold people to such high standards really you know another thing i feel which is important is not to fight with what is mhm um you know especially about people and upset right because we are talking about people and upset they have a certain personality and um you know in maybe when you first started to get to know them they showed a different side of their personality but now they're showing you a very different side of their personality mm. um just to remember that that is who they are 
and not to fight with it, not to fight with what is. That is who they are. Why am I internally? The reason I'm getting upset is I'm fighting with what is. Let's say someone in here um, is very rude all the time. And they just started being very rude. When I first got to know them, they weren't rude. But now, every time I talk to them, they don't want to talk. They're just like, whatever, right? They're being very rude. Why? I feel, first, my expectation of them to be nice to me shouldn't be there. The second thing is I'm upset because I'm fighting with the fact that they are rude and they're not nice. I'm fighting with what is to just accept what is. Let them do what they need to do and you do what you need to do and don't fight it. I just, you will see, you will see how different you feel when you don't fight with what is. Any situation, any person, don't fight with what's happening. Don't compare it to, oh, two days ago it was not like this. When I first met them, it wasn't like this. Whatever, whatever, right? Don't compare. This is what it is right now and just accept it. What a relief. <laughs> what a huge relief. Just, just, I'm not going to try and make someone different than they are. I'm going to completely accept it. Because what, otherwise what happens is we get very upset, don't we? I, I have an idea of what people, someone should be like in my head. And then there's the actual person and their real behavior. And there's a mismatch. And then I, according to how far away these two things are, that's how much upset I'm going to get. You know why it happens, right? The mismatch. When you first get to know them, they act in a different way. And then again, then they act in a different way after you go to get to know them. So your mismatch is not that they are behaving badly now. The mismatch is when you, you're you matching to their original behavior. That's right. the mismatch. Or, or even we might project onto people things that aren't there at all. And then we find out that well, our projection is not real as well. That's the other one, isn't right. it? Oh, this person's so wonderful, wonderful. And then you start thinking, hang on a minute, what are they really like? What are they doing? <laughs> What are they not doing? It's uh, it's a huge. I remember wanting someone to change in my life f for quite a long time. You know, trying to like, what about this? And free? and then finally, I realised it's just not happening. And um, and this person's just like they're just they are the way they are, and it's that's totally fine. And as soon as I just gave up on trying to change anyone else in any way and said I'm, I'm adjusting my behavior and my life accordingly but they don't have to be any different than they are um my irritation just disappeared straight away because any people are, like you said you squeeze someone that's what comes out they wherever they are is whatever they are right what a relief yeah. what a relief i know right and not to fight with what, what a relief is. Yeah. Allow people to do what they need to do. Don't fight with it. Yeah. That's who they are. That's who they are. Um, the other thing uh, that I was thinking that is very important is any person throwing anything, right? Any situation, any person throwing anything at me to remember that you are a little spiritual plant. And anything that gets thrown at that spiritual plant if you have the right awareness, it becomes fertilizer for the plant to grow. Because mm. the awareness has to shift. If you fight with it, if you think, no, this, that, no, then it's not fertilizer. Mm. Then it becomes toxic. But if you have the awareness that it's come here to make me grow, it's the best thing ever. Just remember everything that gets thrown at you, every challenge, everything first there's benefit in it second it is fertilizer and you're going to grow and third you will be much better off in the long run if you don't get upset absolutely and and if none of these things work then you can um, move to the middle of nowhere and live in a shed <laughs> or move to hawaii, the forest. No? <laughs> move to hawaii yeah. come, come to hawaii you just come to hawaii you'll be fine don't worry about it you know everyone's nice here uh, you know, the, the the funny thing is, there's a great story, isn't there, about the guy who comes to a new city and he meets someone at the gate of the city and he says, what are the people like in this city? And the man says, 
what are the people like where you come from? And he says, well, oh, where I come from, they're, everyone's nasty and bitter and they, they, they steal from you and they treat you terribly. And the man says, uh, well, you'll find the same here. And he goes on his way. And a few minutes later, another guy comes and he says, what are the, what are the people like here? And he says, well, what are they like there? Oh, everyone's cheerful and happy and blessed and wonderful and everyone's here looking after each other. And the man says, well, you'll find the same here. And I feel there's a lot of truth to that, actually, because we do tend to attract people, don't we, who are like ourselves. And we're, Absolutely. and so we, we can work on ourselves and we can think about what kind of person do I want to be and what kind of standards do I want to have for myself and that will actually end up changing the sort of people we spend time with and and certain things will be released. So we also have to think about the fact we don't have to have the same relationships. I have different relationships now than I did a few years ago. And um, lots of things have changed. And over time, they keep changing. So who who are we becoming and what how are we coming across and what kind of people would would resonate with that because there's billions of souls isn't there so we can change our our situation some situations of course we can't with you know like they just show up out of the blue um, but even then there's a reason for it and I think one of the other things related to this is that when we have anything coming up with us we can ask what can I learn from this what how does this represent something in myself in some way what i have found is that i i get the sense that people are in many ways are mirrors of some uh, some hidden stuff not always but sometimes like if i'm seeing something showing up externally it can be a sign of some in irrepressed or suppressed or like unconscious stuff within myself that's playing out e externally not always, but it's it can be helpful to think that way because then I can ask myself, well, what can I change in myself? What is this telling me about myself and how can I get clean that out of myself? And I found that when I've done that in a work, those sort of people sort of don't show up very much or not at all. Do you know, I was thinking about um, the time when I wanted to move from wherever I am living. I, wherever I was living, I remember I really badly wanted to move. I didn't like it. This happened, that happened. This relationship is not going well. That thing is not going well. I really need to move, right? All of those things were happening. And I sat in meditation one morning, in our morning meditation, and I had this very distinct feeling that, um, that the Supreme Soul, God, was the spiritual gardener, and I was a plant in his garden. And he was putting me at exactly the right spot, where the sun hits properly, where the enough water is coming, where enough mm. fertilizer is coming. I was exactly in the right mm. spot for my growth, right? And when that happened, when I had that uh, feeling and that happened, I surrendered. Mm. I surrendered to whatever was going on. I surrendered to being here. I surrendered to, you know, everything. I just surrendered. And I remember how everything changed after that, how relationships changed after that, how, you know, what I was working on changed after that, what I was feeling engaged about in my spiritual life, everything changed after that. And so to see not the upset, but see the potential that this is bringing, right? But again, we have to really give a disclaimer here. Like, let's say if you're in an abusive relationship, don't say, oh, I shouldn't get upset here. You know, that's not what we are saying. You know, if you're in an abusive relationship, then um, you definitely need to get out. Um, but 
I'm talking about if you're not in an abusive relationship, you have, you know, you know, healthy relationships and, you know, you're still getting upset, then you don't need to get upset. Upset is an optional thing. And so one thing, right, when I surrendered, it changed. And the other thing that happened that changed for me was when I realized that I have a choice not to get upset. I always mm -hmm. have a choice. In any situation, I can choose not to get upset. And when I choose not to get upset, that is when I see that I have so many possibilities, right? It's like so many possibilities. If I get upset, there's only one possibility, upset. If I choose not to get upset, there's so many possibilities. That's very interesting. I've noticed that as well, that um, let's say someone says something nasty to us, which happens occasionally. It happens online more <laughs> uh, because people are anonymous, right? All this toxic uh, online uh, trolling going on. And um, if, if someone says something online or impersonal, however it is, and we react and want to attack back, obviously that's that's not coming from the right place. And it doesn't, I mean, how many times has that ever worked? If someone attacks and they attack and then it goes on and on, it gets worse and worse and it exasperates and then that's not a good method. If I say, this is someone's under an external influence, I can't expect things from them, they're probably having a bad day, having a hard time, having an awful life. Um, what can I learn from this? Is there any truth to what they're saying? How can I benefit from this? And and all these other things, it, it really diffuses the energy. It completely diffuses it. And we kind of set, step back and go, that's interesting, right? Because we're sort of over here looking at it going, hmm, there's not that energy. Oh, I'm so terrible. Oh, what about this? Because... <laughs> it's much more contemplative and detached sort of feeling. And then we can actually genuinely learn from it. Because I mean, people have criticized me about things online and in person. And if I have the attitude, maybe there's something I can learn here, I don't get upset about it at all. I think this is this is interesting. How can I improve? Then it becomes a very positive thing. If it turns out that they're just completely tripping, and I've really thought, is there anything I can learn in there? It's like nothing to do with me. Then I can just say what well, it's all about them. It's got nothing to do with me at all. I mean, if you look at YouTube comments, right? I, I, I do this sometimes just out of like my own personal amusement. You watch a video and you scroll down and you're like, this has nothing to do with the content at all and everything to do with the person. I mean, it's really obvious. Like they, they probably didn't even watch the video half the time, right? And they just immediately, unless anything to do with politics, just instant attack, you know? And you think, hmm, this is, this is like telltale sign about the consciousness, but not about the actual thing. So th this is something that we're dealing with either online or offline in, in a daily experience. And um, I personally find that if I think most people are suffering and if I could only walk a mile in their shoes, I would probably, you know, just like give them a round of applause um, for how well they're coping, all things considered. Because many, many people have gone through so much terrible stuff in their life and they're under so many influences that the fact that they're not worse than they are is deserves like our immense respect, actually. Um, and so I find that kind of touches my heart and makes me feel more loving and less angry. <laughs> so, you know, you know, one other thing I love, oh. I like what you're saying about, um, to walk a mile in their shoes. But the other thing I feel about getting upset is it's kind of like it takes you, takes over you, right? You mm -hmm. don't want it and it comes in and takes over you. Right. I feel it should, we should be in our dignity. It should be our honor. How can it come and just take over my life, right? We mm -hmm. shouldn't allow it to take over my life. Like, go away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like, it can't get the better of me. It shouldn't right. get the better of me. No, it shouldn't. It, just having the intention, that's why we do these podcasts, because, like, if we have the intention, I'm going to stay in my soul conscious awareness. I'm a spiritual being. 
I've already at attained everything in the sense that I'm eternal and safe, and I receive from a higher power, and this is all a game, right? And people are going to play their parts in the big movie. If we have that consciousness and we aim not to get upset because we're in a higher state, then then chances of us getting upset drop down quite a lot because there's actually a, a practice and a decision about it. If we don't have that, then we're just kind of getting on with our life and things happen and we get upset. So a lot of what we're talking about is like stepping back and having having the intention, just generally speaking, every day. How can I stay in my higher state? And and I know in advance that people are probably going to say strange things and things we might get weird text messages and weird messages and weird emails and who knows what we're going to get. Um, like I'll give an example. I, I, one of my, I'm not going to get into any details, but someone I know was very unhappy about something that, to do with one of my businesses and all these nasty messages and blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and then a few, later on, the message came back, you know, you're great, I'm so sorry, and da, 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 da. this has happened quite a few times, right? So people people get upset themselves. They say things that they don't mean. And and it, and then later and if we just send them blessings, later on, often they come around and they they actually say, you know, I'm really sorry about that. So um which is always quite a fun thing to witness. Um so if we can have that intention to go about our life and stay in that space, have that compassion, then we will feel a lot more relaxed, even if people are whatever they are. So there it is. Yay, Shireen, you have a blessing for us. What's our blessing? Pick a number. 79. This is Shireen's, Shireen's book on uh, God's blessings for you. How many blessings? 116, isn't it? 100, there's 108 plus uh, 8 extra ones that had to be sneaked in at the back. <laughs> All right, what is 79? Purity. Oh, your thoughts have blossomed into a garden of simplicity, fewer in number but rich with love. By opening your heart to God, you've allowed every trace of negativity to be swept away, just like leaves carried off by a cleansing river. I like that. Mm. That's blossomed beautiful. into a garden of simplicity fewer mm. in number and rich with love that's what we need for not getting upset that's right. fewer Absolutely. thoughts everyone is doing the best they can all things considered and our job i think just a final thing i mentioned is like if we think about this like a game you know people play um video games, right? Where there's people trying to attack the character. And that's what the game is about, right? You're going around and someone trying to attack you and are trying to avoid them. If we think about our life as our life is like a game and um, people are going to say stuff to us and our, the, in the game, our job is not to get upset, then it seems quite fun, doesn't it? Let's see how I can do today, you know? It has a little lightness about it. So... Thanks so much, Shireen, for your lovely presence. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for listening, everybody. And uh, like always, we appreciate you. And if you know anyone else who's getting upset could do with watching this, feel free to share it with them. Make their life a bit easier. And as always, we have free meditations, free courses, and all these things just because we want to help you out always free no upsells and you can get it below in below the video with the links have a beautiful day and lots of love